This past week, I had the pleasure of spending four days in Fukuoka, Japan. In this time, we explored so many beautiful areas, experienced the culture, and learned the history of Fukuoka. There is so much to do in this beautiful city, and I will be sharing everything we did in the time we visited. Whenever Aiden and I plan a trip, we always like to save one of the days to freely explore the city we are in without an itinerary. For us, that was day two of our trip. Because of this, there was really no rhyme or reason to day two. So, before I get into day three, we are going to speed through day two of our trip in Fukuoka. Our first stop of the day was to find coffee, of course. The aesthetic of this coffee shop was super unique and the coffee was so good. We both ordered cafe lattes with an extra shot of espresso and we also gave the matcha cheesecake a try and it was amazing. After we got coffee, we were off to find our first proper meal of the day and came across this cute little udon shop. The interior of this udon shop was so unique. There were instruments hanging all over the walls and they were playing classical and jazz music. If you didn't know, I come from a family of musicians, so this was really up my alley. And of course, the food was amazing. After lunch, we wandered around the city and came across this beautiful path on the way to the art museum. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to record the museum, but it was a really cool experience and a great way to beat the summer heat. The highlight of my day was definitely Ohori Park. Not only is it absolutely beautiful, but there are so many cute animals like turtles, ducks, and cranes just hanging out. This little duck was even following us around the whole time. They also had little paddle boats you could rent. Ohori Park is the perfect escape away from the busy city. We ended our day doing some shopping at some of the stores that we don't have in Okinawa, like Patagonia and some other department stores. And we finished our day off at Shin Shin Ramen. And that's all for day two. Our first stop of the day was the Ukihara Shrine. This destination was two hours from our hotel so we had to be in our day bright and early. In order to get there, we had to take three different local trains. We did have a little bit of trouble figuring out where to go for each train because the smaller train stations are a little more difficult to navigate. But luckily, Aiden is great at figuring our commutes out. I truly don't know what I would do without him on these trips. Although the ride to get there was long, the views from the train were absolutely beautiful, and it was a great way to enjoy the views of the Japanese countryside. So we finally made it to our final stop, and now I believe it's about, what, a 15 minute walk? Longer? 
Okay, just kidding. 25 minute walk over there. We could get a taxi, but Ava and I really do enjoy walking through the neighborhoods and just seeing like, I don't know what life is like in these little local areas. And if you don't walk, you kind of miss a lot of it. So yeah, we're gonna make this little walk and then we'll be at the Inari Tori soon. about 300 steps to get to the top. While this was not the easiest in the Japanese summer heat, the views from the top made it completely worth it. Okay, so we're back down and it was definitely shorter than I thought it would be. If you've been to the one in Kyoto, I want to say this is me rough estimating. I almost honestly think that one's probably like three times the size. It's definitely, definitely doable. Just bring your walking shoes, bring water beforehand because there's really no water or anything like that over there. There is a bathroom at the top. Um, and then this towel has honestly been really nice. So if you're like me and you sweat a lot, I really recommend because this is helping me cool off. And it's also keep in mind, it's August in Fukuoka, Japan. So we kind of asked for this, but it's okay, well worth it. Now we are going to walk back into like the residential area, see what's up. And if there's nothing, then we'll just go from there. So just pro tip, when you get to the station, they don't take Suica. So you have to purchase a ticket. So we got two tickets and it's 660 to get to our stop. Side by side, we sway there in all the colors. Kurume, we decided to take the Shinkansen back to the city. Although it was a little more expensive, it was worth saving the time. Instead of spending an hour on the local train, we only spent 16 minutes on the Shinkansen.
we are now headed over to a shrine that's near our hotel i'll put the name of it here and i heard it's highly recommended so we definitely want to go check it out and then we'll go from there the kushida jinja shrine is located in hakata ku fukuoka This shrine is famous for having the largest otafuku mask in Japan and it is also a place for people to pray. The shrine was full of beautiful design and nature and it was really cool to immerse ourselves in a Japanese place of worship.